next case here, we have uh, case 16. Anyone want to take this? So in this one, there is like uh, a biopsy which has bluish mucin deposition. Right. But uh, like there are no associated uh, like blood vessels or something that will make it like a myxoma. So it is just like focal mucinosis. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know why these this happens, but but it's just this kind of it seems to be an incidental little aggregation of mucin, mu mixoid substance, hyaluronic acid that forms a little papule. And I feel like the times I've seen this, it clinically they uh, the the dermatologist will often be wondering if it's a, a nevus or a basal cell. It's like a little skin, skin colored, small papule. Okay. So, um, and it'll get, that's why it's been shaved off because they were thinking it was, you know, either a basal or a, a nevus maybe, or a, a small, like a non-pigmented seb, separate keratose, something like that. And then all we see is hypocellular, um, mucin replacing and kind of filling in the dermis. Okay. So, um, the, uh, that, yes, without the vessels or the scattered neutrophils or the entrapped nexal structures, and it's a small papule, I would call this focal cutaneous mucinosis, focal dermal mucinosis, same thing to me. Um, if I wasn't sure, um, especially if it was a really tiny shave, like say I just had like this, uh, how would I know? Or if I didn't have any clinical info, this could maybe be the top of, uh, um, pretibial myxedema. If this was from the lower leg and, and no one had told me any clinical and just said biopsy, well, I would try to get clinical information, but I would say dermal mucin deposition. If it's a solitary papule, it would be, you know, loc uh, focal uh, cutaneous mucinosis. If this is a larger uh, nodular, multinodular or plaque-like um, um, uh, process on the lower legs, then this could be thyroid dermopathy, uh, pretibial myxedema, and recommend workup for uh, hyperthyroidism or correlation with patient history. So I'm lucky that I work in a job where I have clinical photos most of the time and great clinical history, but I know that uh, many, if not most of my Dermpath colleagues out there uh, don't have that luxury and really often have limited information available. And it really, really makes our job harder. So if you're uh, uh, watching this and you're a treating physician, uh, please make sure to give clinical photos and good clinical history because it can really help us make the right diagnosis. All right. so. That's sometimes that's what I'll say though. If it's if I don't if I don't know, I'll just say there's a mix of change of the dermis and give that differential and and then uh, let them work it up. Or I'll say it, maybe it could be the top of a cutaneous myxoma. I just can't tell, right? The other thing is from low power, this kind of looks a little like soliolastosis, right? Mucin and soliolastosis both look blue, but when you go closer, mucin is like kind of speckly uh, and kind of grainy looking. It's hard to tell here on this scan, but if you have a light microscope and can flip the condenser it. You can see there's kind of a granular looking speckled um, uh, kind of texture to it. Uh, and it sometimes is much more, when it's abundant like this, it, it's uh, easy to see, but when it's subtle, it can be really hard, like when it's just little bits of it. And then solar elastosis will actually be like big fibers. You can see there are some elastic fibers here in the background. They're kind of showing up clear in this case, but the mucin itself is like very like kind of loose and, and speckly stippled appearing. But I think those two things from, from low power can be hard to tell apart. And so uh, with practice, you can do it. Otherwise, you can use stains to help you. You could use an elastic stain for elastosis. You could use an alstrom blue or colloidal iron for, for highlighting the, the mixoid uh, mucin material. But generally, H&E is good enough.